it was on the Anthony Cumia Show featuring Dave Landau. I set up unintentionally the gayest picture that Jimmy's ever taken. Um, wow. Jimmy Jimmy and I are both huge metal fans. We're both huge rock fans. Oh, yeah. And before he was on your show and before I was on Howard, we would meet up and go to concerts. I met him through, um, I think, Jay Okerson or, or Florentine. We're just like, there's like a group of us comics yeah. that love uh, going to shows. And um, I brought Jimmy, uh, didn't realize that Jimmy was a huge Kiss fan. Oh, my God. And I'm starting to develop this relationship with Kiss um, because I've been making fun of him for years and <laughs> and come to find out that Paul Stanley and this is a quote loves when anyone makes fun of Gene Simmons oh, loves when anyone makes fun of Gene yeah, Simmons yeah. so um so I'm going to go to the show I have passes and I invite a couple comics Steve Byrne, Jeff Ross and Jim Norton somebody comes up to me and says uh, hey Craig you know I don't know if you guys are interested, but we do a photo that we charge a thousand dollars for, where the band in their makeup and in their outfits they do they do a group photo with a fan. Wow! For a thousand bucks, and if you guys want, I'll put you in line. You know, put you in the back. You know, and after the fans are done, you can have your photo. And I said, "Do you guys want to do that?" And Jimmy said, "Oh my God, yeah, yeah." yeah. He goes, "Can we do that?" So we're in line, and Jimmy turns around, looks at us, and goes, "Do you guys mind if I if I get my own my own photo?" To, and we <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, we go. Uh, yeah, I don't get. Do you guys care? No, go, uh, Jimmy. If you want to get your own photo, so before we go up as a group, Jimmy walks up, guys. Yeah, and he, and he walks in front of them. Paul Stanley has no shirt on, and he's got all, a lot of chest hair. Oh, he's got a lot of hair. And Paul's in the middle of this group of of Kiss. Jimmy walks into the middle of the group, and Paul knows who he is. He goes, "Come here," and he and he grabs him like this to choke him from behind. Oh, shit. Jimmy, without even thinking about how this is going to look on camera. Gets excited, holds Paul's arm, and leans oh, back into oh, his yeah, chest yeah, yeah. like his date for the night. It is the I, most homoerotic. I do believe I've seen that picture. It is one of the most homoerotic photos. <laughs> Paul Stanley, no shirt yeah, on. It's sort of like, oh. Uh, and Jimmy's in ecstasy. I'm getting choked by my That might be favorite. online if you could find that somewhere. Oh, he. Jimmy, um, and it was a thousand dollars. A thousand. For fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for fans. fans. Yeah, I, I love, like, Jimmy once uh, posted some pictures of uh, his house or his apartment when he uh, moved in. And um, the, the, the most striking thing was over his bed. This is an adult. <laughs> Over his bed is a giant kiss poster. Really? And it's like, what do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you bring girls back here? Well, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I'm sure it's not the first time a prostitute's seen a kiss post. A kiss post, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> probably actually a nice change. Yeah. If, <laughs> if religious if, things and fucking yeah, crosses. If a thousand dollars blows your mind, um, I can tell you that uh, I performed with Kiss a few times over the years, and uh, the members now. On top of that group photo, they all do side things that they can do. One of them is you can meet Gene before the show oh. and have a bass that he's going to play on stage. He'll sign the bass for you, and he'll play a song on stage with the bass that he autographed for you. Oh, my God. That's so, got to be how much? Tell him whatever you want, and he'll, you know, if you want him to write song lyrics or just, Anthony, go fuck yourself, what, right. whatever you want, he'll write it on the bass. He'll play it. You see him on stage. He's pointing at you, and then you get to pick it up after the show. Oh, it's crazy. $7,000. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's a knockoff, like, Les yeah. Paul or something. I, I know exactly how much it costs to make. <laughs> how much? Yeah. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> Three hundred dollars. Like what? P base, basically. <laughs> but hey, th there is a value in being able to to have Gene sign it to you. True. Watch him play it on stage, on and you stage. get to, and then you get a photograph of him on stage, and you can probably frame it next to your base and whatever. Or take it down to the fucking I was, pawn shop in I was, Vegas. Yeah, I was honestly expecting way higher to be to, uh, to be honest. I was well, thinking like twenty five grand. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm I'm performing on a. I don't know if it's changed since then, but I'm performing on a Kiss cruise with with Kiss, and uh, I run into all the uh, the roadies uh, at, a, at a restaurant the night before, and I said, hey, uh, I'm doing my show tomorrow, by the way, if you guys can make it. Before you guys have a show, I have a show tomorrow night at 8 o'clock in the theater, so please come out and see me. Everyone says yes, except for Gene's bass tech. Who has to, you know, take care of his bases? He goes, right. oh, I can't. He goes, I got to set up all his uh, his bases for the meet and greets. And I go, well, how many does he have? And he said, he sold seventy of them for oh. this cruise. Seventy at, at seven at, at least grand. Seven G's of pop. Seven. He grossed 
four hundred ninety thousand dollars on a five day trip. Holy Grossed. Dude, that's fucking. Hey, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yell at him. Call yeah. Him an asshole. That's fucking brilliant. And his shows are him playing. I mean, yes. Pointing but, yeah. at one guy. Yeah. It's yeah. Insane. His shows are every song. He's I know, it's, he's pointing at one guy, fun. and then he takes the bass off, gets another one, and he points at the other guy. It's yours. It's a good <laughs> fan must be like you fucking. Uh, it's good you're mentioning shit. guy though, because there's not a woman paying for that. Oh, all <laughs> guys. a band. But know? I gotta say, there's more artists that. That follow Kiss's lead. Other bands are doing oh, it. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the money's it, there. I mean, Kiss was one of the first ones to charge for a photo. And it really is an iconic group of guys to to have a photograph. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you it, know immediately who they are when, when, you see when they face. have their makeup yeah. on. I mean, that that's a crazy group to stand it, in the middle of and it have. Really that, is. That is a rare thing to have. It's and it's cool. I could see how it's fucking pretty cool. Imagine though, you walk into the Pawn Stars place in Vegas with that guitar because you're out of money. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd like to pawn this, and he just goes, dude. And he points to the wall, <laughs> just covered oh. in those. He goes, "I'll give you twenty five bucks." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> covered in jeans and signed fucking guitars. And it's like I just sold them for three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gene just already hit up the shop and sold yeah, yeah, them a bunch yeah, of yeah. guitars. All the ones that were left in the sack. <laughs> there's, Jesus, dude, there's a market for it. It's really crazy. If you thought, if you thought though, like back in the seventies uh, when Kiss really first started. That in 2018, this motherfucker would be selling shit yeah. and still touring. Like, there are some bands that I know damn well on stage. They're just going, I never would have imagined. Yeah. In 2018, I, th I thought if we were going to be playing, I would be in a robot body on Venus. Yeah. yeah. Playing. Uh, but to, you know, just still, all right, you guys are on. It's like, fuck, we've been doing this a half a century. Dude, they were fucking Blue Oyster Cult's opener. I yeah, mean, that's part yeah, of the reason yeah. they skyrocketed was just touring with them. It's, Blue just, it's weird that we live in an, love, in an age now where, you know, when you're growing up and you're watching bands like, uh, you know, like in Led Zeppelin's day, the idea of like, how do I get to meet them? Or, or like, right. I'm such a fan, yeah. I want to meet them. And now you can pay to meet anyone right. before a show and get hustled through a meet and greet. There are certain things that happen, like uh, Blue Oyster Cult, for example. Me, my brother, Joe Curry. All of my friends and everything were the biggest Blue Oyster Cult fans. We went to every show, the Black and Blue tour that was going out with Black Sabbath and Blue Oyster wow. Cult. It was huge. Yeah, holy they shit. went to the Nassau Coliseum. Earlier than that, they would play at clubs out on Long Island under Soft White Underbelly. They'd play at um, Chevy's, which was um, uh, the Mad Hatter Stony Brook and Tui's and all these plays out on Long Island. We went to every fucking show. Loved them. So you go a few years ahead. My brother literally auditions to be in the band. Uh, he unfortunately was too tall. They're all a bunch of midgets. They're very short guys. Really? Sounds like he was too tall, like but people. He did very well, and they like him. And he played with them. He for played a minute, with them on yeah, stage yeah. a few, a couple of times, and uh, and then like um, we, one of the guys, Eric Bloom was over at my house, like came over with Joe, sat down in the back, we're just drinking beers and talking. I'm like, like years ago, I'd have lost my fucking mind over this. And it's still cool as fuck, but it's it like- It is, it's crazy. You just never know like how shit happens where you're like, this guy was literally a hero to me when I was 17, 16. They seem 17. untouchable right, when you're a kid. You, you, you just seem like they're from another planet. Yeah, yeah, so and the, they were. It was like, yeah. you didn't have access to these fucking people, you would go to a concert and look where they came out from uh, backstage yeah. and realize there ain't no fucking way you're even getting close to that spot yeah. where they come out of and, and go in and backstage. It was this area you could only imagine what it was like. Yeah. Dude, when I, because you open for bands and stuff sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's like, I remember when I opened for the Doobie Brothers. Oh, the Doobies. It's, like, it's different when you're opening for a comic, though, but when you actually walk back there and you're like, oh, this is like fucking, uh, you know, th this is a band. Yeah, it's a real. Everything they have around, because it's like, yeah, there's there's huge fans, there's groupies, there's fucking. <laughs> That's when it hits me that this is yeah, going like... to go horribly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it does. So, like Every time. I did, Every when I, I opened time. for Metallica here oh. in New York, and it was me. Uh, yeah, unless your name's Jim Brewer and you're singing, good luck to you. Yeah, and uh, Jim Florentine. Was, they love yeah. Florentine. Do they? Jim was in the audience that night. Jim and Rob Zombie and a bunch of like a uh, bunch of cool people were in the audience that night. It was me having a new friendship with one of the guys in Metallica, trying to take advantage of it by saying, uh, "Hey, I saw that you guys are doing a promotional show in New York. If you guys had any balls, you would let a comedian open up for you." And I still, and this oh, is shit. embarrassing to admit, I still have 
the voicemail he left me. I save. <laughs> I it, it's just a short message. Just boop. Hey man, it's Lars. Um, and I talked to James and some of the other guys. And yeah, come out and do a couple 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is they fucking do. <laughs> come do some comedy. And it was at the, um, um, it was in a small venue for Metallica. It's a thousand seats, Bowery Ballroom. Oh, yeah. And it was okay. a K Rock event. The only way to get tickets, you had to get them through the Metallica fan club or go through our station at K Rock. And it dawns on me when I get to the venue that. Everyone here is on coke. Like, yeah. why, why are they going to, like, I don't even want to see a comedian open oh, for Metallica. No, it's... Why am I here? So I started doing something that I've repeated over and over and I again. I love that it starts, too, with, like, yeah, you guys had any balls. Like, yeah, it's going to be hard for uh, Metallica <laughs> yeah, to follow a comic. Some balls. Well, that was, that there, was me. Eating shit. Yeah, that was me with a, a couple drinks of me at the time. <laughs> thinking that, uh, and, uh, and it just, uh, for me, I went out on stage and just lied to the audience. And that's what I've done. Uh, uh, when I opened for System of a Down, um, Motley Crue, I recently opened for the Struts, who are this really cool new band. I go out on stage and say, hey, everybody, my name's Craig. I am Metallica Soundman. And that immediately gets everybody's attention. Oh, shit, that's and then, great. Uh, there's some uh, uh, announcements that the band needs to make, and I just make up super cool shit. That's not happening. That's yeah. but I make it, awesome. But it gets everybody's attention, and then I add some jokes. Right. And uh, you may have heard some rumors, and it's true. We are recording our first ever live album right here tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, and I go, so I need your attention. I need your attention. Oh, my God. There's a proper awesome. way to yell on a live album, so we need to rehearse this. And they follow every stupid instruction <laughs> I give them. And and then by the time twenty minutes comes up, it's like, all right, I'm that a comedian, by the way, and I walk brilliant. up, and the band comes out. That's Steve Martin amazing. opened for the Doobie Brothers, and there's a legendary story about oh, Steve really? Martin opening for them in the '70s, walking out into the I think it's the Heckhead Pavilion in L.A. where the UCLA uh, basketball team plays. That the Doobie Brothers were had a stage in the middle of the arena floor, and they were playing to this half of the arena, and then the back of the stage, everything was empty in this half of the arena. And so Steve Martin walked out and faced the empty half and said, uh, well, I expected there would be a lot more people here tonight, but uh, here we go. And he did his entire act with his back to the audience. <laughs> the fucking and every time people laughed, he went, wow, you guys are louder than I expected. And yeah, and he did his whole act That's with his brilliant. back to, Incredible. to the audience. Yeah, yeah, it's, it seems to be more yeah, accepted I, now. Their, uh, their, their fans were pretty good. Like after a couple minutes, like they were high enough to be like somewhat into comedy and a little older. Yeah. You know, Donna Summers fans wish I was dead. Oh, I couldn't uh, imagine. Wow. Yeah. Well, I walked out and <laughs> yeah. first she made me go out and <laughs> Donna daylight. Summer. I know, right? What the fuck oh, are you doing? Dude, I was done. so I walk out. There's uh, no keys on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? And do you... I, I walk out, and she she had a guy bitching me because I was smoking a cigarette too close to her trailer, right? Yeah. And I, and apparently, I'm like fucking a hundred yards. I'm like, where's your trailer? Right there. She's like, you know, you can't make eye contact with her. All that shit. Oh no. How you actually got that instruction? Yeah, which was the rare. Don't make thing. eye contact. Like, don't wow. don't look. You know. And I'm like, why is she? You know. And I don't know if the guy was just fucking with me, but I came Maybe, out, yeah. And they fucking hated my guts. And I was like, yeah, I wasn't allowed to smoke during her trailer. I'm sure she didn't give a shit when she was doing coke off or uh, coke off at dicks at studio 54 oh, wow you know mark you ridley that endeared uh, you uh, the, the guy from detroit yeah, yeah he managed me he's just in the crowd who got me the gig and he's like oh, oh. Oh, Jesus. The whole place. I wouldn't know how to. I remember being. I think you just walk out and go, hey, has everybody worked hard for their money? What was. You just start yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's what she did. Of she course. Was, she was like, I chipped a tooth today on a piece of toast. <laughs> and I went to a dentist here, and I got to say, he works hard for the money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking... Just, just use her fucking yeah. lyrics and song titles. And I'm in the back with, like, girlfriend, wife now, just like, she's lip syncing. <laughs> it's bullshit. all fake. I was uh, backstage at a uh, the Guns N' Roses concert here at MetLife Stadium a couple years ago. The opening act was Lenny Kravitz. I'm leaving the venue, and I have uh, my comedy specials that I'm I'm handing out to people, going, "Hey, put this on your bus," you know. And and I walk by Lenny Kravitz's dressing room. The dressing room door is wide open. There's like a party going on, and I go, Sh "Should I? Yeah, you know what? Fuck it." And I knocked on the door. Everyone turns around. And I go. Hey, my name's Craig Gass. I'm a stand-up comedian. And they go, oh, 
oh, we love comedians. Get in here. Oh. And I go, hey, I just want to leave this. Put this on your bus. And someone goes, wait, tell us a joke. And I go, I don't know. You know what? And they go, no, tell it. Hold on. Hey, this guy's a stand-up comedian. He's going to tell us a joke. Oh, All right. No. Come on, tell us a joke. And it's a room full of black people. Oh, no. <laughs> and I go, uh... And then against my better judgment, I go, hey, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, you guys know who Tracy Morgan is? And they go, yeah. I tell them a Tracy Morgan story. And as I'm doing Tracy's voice, I don't think the people in the back of the room understood what oh, was what going on. Doing, so it's just some guy talking. A white guy Tracy. talking like a black dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I go, oh, shit. I'm going to put a baby in your butthole. That's crazy. <laughs> and everyone just stared at me. And I went. If you watch the DVD, yeah. I think it'll explain <laughs> yeah, more. I'll, I'll be leaving. It fucking bombed oh, in that room. Oh, oh, I turned around and walked out to total silence. And I remember I, I stacked up the DVDs uh, on the edge of a of a table like this, and there was a garbage can right there. And I know oh, they just Jesus went, yeah, nice. they just threw it off oh in the garbage God. can. Oof. Not only did you bomb in a room, but you bore. You <laughs> And Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz, together. and he's got the hippest, coolest band. They they just yeah. all look like the coolest. They look like they're straight out of the 70s. Yeah. Like cool musician guys. Yeah. And I just ate it in front of them. And I, I didn't have to. I could have just stuck to my guns and right, said, right. Hey, just watch it. Uh, I love it you guys. In, you yeah, pop it, it in because it you within the context, it works. Right. But me standing in this room trying to tell you jokes. And you know that as a comic. You should never do that when yeah, someone you, says. Or just have like the three jokes planned. Like I have that sometimes yeah. where it's just like a quick, you know. Like, you know, what's if the someone difference? someone calls you out, you could just... Yeah, you're like, what's the difference between, you know, a baby and a bag of cocaine? <laughs> Eric Clapton would never let a bag of cocaine fall out a window. <laughs> so it's like you just throw yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah. Ooh, so it's like... quick. It, it's and fighting. It's, and, everybody, every, and it's enough to wow. make them stop asking yeah. for more jokes. Yeah, yeah, you know then, then they, won't, like they don't want any more it's jokes. Not a, it's not racist, but it's still dead baby. But nobody, yeah. nobody's going to hate you for it, but they're not going to want you to keep going. Anthony Kumia show with Dave Landau. The, this guy decided to uh, write a song and perform a song. Now we uh, <laughs> d discuss the assholes that make songs <laughs> and how terrible they are. It's so like it, it's so presumptuous that you are so good that you could write a song about something that's going on, and I don't know. People would give a fuck. It, it, they, they give a fuck or think you're good at it. I made it through uh, the opening little musical interlude and then uh, him starting to sing, and I shut it off. So I was like, I don't want to hear any more of this. So I've not heard this, but I All thought right. we, we, we should just play it and see if he's good or bad, open and honestly, without any preconceived uh, notions. It sounds like another song. I got to run no to keep from hiding. And I suggest you walk on by. Oh, no. Uh -oh. This is America, the land of the free, so you better just. Uh, it's called Make America Great Again. God. We should always come together. We're one nation, don't you see? Oh, don't you see? Is he at a, he at a Pier 1 import? Star Spangled Banner, we should never. Take a knee. Take a knee. Oh, oh. If we want to make America great again, we can start by lending a helping hand. Oh, we're oh America great again, no helping hand. Where we're from. Uh, from? We should always oh, stand for the red, white, and blue. Put our trust in God and He'll see us through. We should never be ashamed. Uh, in hand that's what it takes if we want to make America great again uh, you think he just jerks off thinking about him on stage at a Trump rally oh, fuck yeah I'm going to great he, yeah, right now he thinks he's wearing a snake skin hat and a hundred thousand people cheering oh Trump uh, oh. if we want to make America Start by maybe that ceiling caving in on your head. <laughs> I hope he opens an envelope right after this that says it's terminal. We should always stand for the red, white, and blue. Put our trust in God. 
first through He'll see us through. We should never be ashamed. Oh, one shot through that window. Just watch his head explode in a pink. So nice. <laughs> That's what it takes if we want to make America great again. What's with that voice here? I want this country to be better, Mister. That's fuck why yeah. I sex with my sister. So and lick <laughs> my ass and suck on my balls, Mary girl. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. That's kind of what he's doing. I got a trucks and I don't like blacks. I just <laughs> yeah. bought myself a new gun rack. Stomping queers. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you want to make America great again. Yes, everybody's a dandy projector. You want to make America uh. great again. Don't have yourself any minority friends. <laughs> 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 it's so bad when people do that. Why do they do that? What's that smell? I think it's the gays burning in hell. <laughs> Making America, <laughs> America great again. It's yeah. like he's doing Bradley Cooper in that recent movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah. what inspired him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the side of my jaw like Sling Blade. <laughs> well, the Lord hates faggots and so do I. We all hope they just up and die. Because the faggot is Satan's uh, imp just like the Jew. <laughs> I don't think blacks should be allowed to vote. Them engines all went up in smoke. <laughs> America great again. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the good old days like punching your wife right in the face. <laughs> if she doesn't cut your sandwich with a knife, <laughs> it's all right to deck your wife. <laughs> Man, America. <laughs> His son comes home and says he's a queer. Just put a shotgun in his ear. And cause he takes a lot of dick in his rear. And chop him up with the John Deere. I'm <laughs> <My> John Deere. <laughs> cause we're gonna make America yeah, great again. again. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's just... That's just awful. <laughs> Make America great again. I'll never accept my son's living in sin. I, I wrote this song because he loves the dong. He said, Dad, I got good news and I got some bad. My boyfriend's black. Uh, now I'm really sad. And I'll genetically never be a dad. <laughs> oh, shit. Unless we adopt a Chinese, I'm going to keep sucking dick on my knees. So before I suck on a barrel of this gun, last thought I got about my queer son. It's him covered in some Negroes come. <laughs> Is it gonna make America great again? Oh shit. It's yeah. My, all my family's bodies are in this house Cause I found out my son wears a blouse Making America great again <laughs> Setting fire to my faggot kid Because of the sinning that he did Making America great again <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Hey, it's not that hard to write one of those. Oh, what a good tune. Yeah, good. <laughs> good tune. It's top of the country charts. Yeah. I hate it. I love it. Just, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Just, you'll know you made it if you ever uh, get to play a uh, strip shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that guy. You wrote yeah. a song for James Woods. Oh, I no. didn't listen to it, but. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, God, the same dumb face and accent. Oh, get a strap. This song is dedicated to the one and only James Woods. Oh, my James God. Woods. And it goes a little something like this I like the hard way. The old stars on sidewalks and cameras still rolling. James Woods is tweeting and Democrats trolling. Is Corey real Spartacus or just an a hole? These are the things that James Woods wants to know. Where is Acosta's Buckler collection? Pocahontas fork tone. DNA a sad fraction. Claire got a big scare. Nice try there, Miss Toots. These are the reasons James Woods is a who. Rats in wood piles, hoodlums, hoodies. Oh if you're God. feeling sad, <laughs> just simply remember his hysterical tweets, and then you won't feel so bad. Okay. <laughs> wow. That is bad. Well, Trayvon Martin was not killed by a cop. He was killed by an asshole <laughs> who thought he was a security <laughs> guard. <laughs> I love that he just throws. I love the Trayvon Zim man. You Martin. can't flim flam the Zim man. <laughs> it's just like it's not. A, oh. I hate how people put that on the cops. It's like no, he was just a dick. Oh. They didn't even want him to have a gun. <laughs> big, big burning crosses and nooses for lynching. <laughs> <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. Jews run the media and nobody's bitching. <laughs> Hook nose kikes. <laughs> car full of faggots. <laughs> I'd rather have dinner that's made with maggots. <laughs> Throwing a Molotov cocktail at a car filled with Jews. These are. <laughs> One of the cures for my blues. <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Uh. <laughs> oh, shit. Taking some pot shots at illegal Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's, he has some favorite things. Wow, that guy is about a lump of shit. <laughs> Latin yeah. girls I'm raping and kissing <laughs> while I patrol the borders without permission. <laughs> <laughs> Your Dave Landau concert calendar. Hey guys, Dave Landau here. I've got some tour dates for you. November 9th and 10th, I will be at the Looney Bin. You know it's a high class place when it's called the Looney Bin in Little Rock, Arkansas. Tickets are at www.looneybincomedy.com. Also, November 16th and 17th, see me at One Night Stands. That's in Waterford, Michigan. That's at one night stands comedy club.com. And also Friday, November 23rd, the day after Thanksgiving, comedy night at the market in Flint Farmers Market. That's in Flint, Michigan, where the water killed all those people. So don't drink the water when you come out to the show, but do enjoy the comedy. Tickets? Uh, Google it. I have no fucking idea. You can follow me on Twitter at Landau Dave, Instagram at DT Landau, and for all info on me davelandau.com again that's davelandau.com l-a-n-d-a-u like the shitty roof or martin landau all right the anthony cumia show uh opie so so i i get sent this video and i assume and I'm, I'm only assuming but this is based on 20 years of uh knowing the guy that he saw that we uh, had done an interview with Joe. The pictures were out there and everything. Everyone's posting them. We were posting stuff from UFC, so I'm sure he knew that we were uh, hanging out. Uh, so he then goes on YouTube, on his account, and posts a video of him, uh, which can only be described as a, a scorned boyfriend, like a scorned teen boyfriend. Sending a video to his now ex-girlfriend 
asking what happened. I it's so sad. I even gave it the benefit of the doubt because I felt so bad. I felt bad. <laughs> I wrote that back to Joe. I was like, I hate when he does this because it makes me feel sorry for him, and I don't want to feel sorry for him. I'm sorry. It's like, well, we're, we're first of all. Joe's a big fan of you and has thanked you for his show. Yeah! I said that. He said, you're the reason why his show created it. I go, also, we have a very scheduled program. It's not just a random thing. That's right. You get in, like, a restaurant. I was like, so, you know, maybe. And I was really trying to be nice. I, I was really trying to just give him the benefit yeah, of the yeah. doubt of, like, well, you know, he's busy. And we have a very. You can't just drop into some gin mill on the Upper West Side. and But it's a one-man operation versus an actual studio with the right. schedule. Yeah, with a schedule and, and, and equipment. I, the nicest I could put, <laughs> you know. microphones. And you and Joe are good friends. And, and, and I also said it could maybe not be the right number. He hasn't talked to Joe in a very long time. Right, right. I'm sure Joe's a guy who has to change his number a fucking... Probably a lot. But no, that was another thing that was written down. He goes, I, he doesn't even... He goes, he doesn't even have my number. What's See, he talking yes. about? Right. See, immediately I so was So I'm right. like, oh, okay. That, you know, that makes sense. Because he goes, Joe, what happened? I texted you. You didn't get back to me. I'm just sitting here spinning around. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Like a record player, right round. Remember that one? Meat yeah. spin. Oh, it's like <laughs> Keith used to put that on in the hotel rooms. We would go to Atlantic City with all of our pals and everything. Yeah. And go gambling. And uh, when they used to put computers in your room yeah, yeah. for convenience. And he would put that on. And the dick is spin, And there'd be a counter. Of how many dick spins went around. And, uh, you know, we'd leave. We'd come back hours later knowing that the maids and the butler and the room service oh, yeah. people have been in there watching a dick spin around 10,000 times. <laughs> Keith loved meat spin. We get like 175,000 spins 100, in a weekend. Yeah, yeah, 175,000 spins. Amazing. It's meat great. spin. Meat spin. Should be a game show. It's one of those things, too, if you're listening to one of those classic stations, uh, 80s or something like that, when it comes on, you no longer think of anything but meat spin for, yeah, to that song. Yeah, yeah that's it's true. just a meat spin song now. It is. Amazing. They've uh, co-opted that one. So, uh, Greggy uh, put out this video. Uh, no further ado, let's watch uh, Greg Opie's uh, try to get uh, Joe Rogan to do something. I don't even know what he's asking for. To come on his show, right? Come on, Yo, the Joe Rogan. I got a question for you. I saw that you were coming to New York City for the UFC, and I got excited. Haven't seen you in a while, so I DM'd you, and I also uh, texted you saying, "Hey, man, what's he doing? Why don't you do the Opie Radio podcast? It'd be great." I also said, uh, "No pressure if you can't." Man. Like, could you imagine those that like that guy going like, what is this fucking nut doing? And that's why this is New York. So he probably just looks like a nut. He's got the beard and the wool cap and everything. So if he's just talking and spinning around, it's probably like, oh, it's a crazy homeless guy. It's a crazy homeless guy. <laughs> Dude, I'm uncomfortable so much with the video. Even the one we just did real quick for 20 seconds and with Bobo. <laughs> Let's do this real fast. Let's do it fast, man. Like, But when I'm out in public, I've talked about it. I don't talk on my phone. I can't. Uh, no. I really have to. I need the blinders on, and I, I need to be, go from point A to point B. Yeah, like, I've had, if I have to use blue, I'm, like, in a corner. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, look, let me call you back. I'm on the train. Shut up. I've You'll never <laughs> see me like, hey. Watch. So, Joe! Watch your show. Joe, uh, what happened? <laughs> I heard you were in New York, Joe. Where you been? Why didn't you... Why haven't you talked to me? I, I just don't... I don't have the confidence. No, the confidence. <laughs> see or the mental illness. Try to put it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, roll with the, more of this. I also said, uh, no pressure if you can't. Also oh, said, oh, sorry. congrats okay. on the Netflix No pressure special. if you can't. No pressure. And then he goes on YouTube and calls him out? That's no pressure? No pressure is you text. If he gets back to you, then you figure something out. If he doesn't, then you leave it alone. No pressure. This is pressure. <laughs> the, the best place to put this, I think, is YouTube with a comment section. Oh, my God. The com we'll get to the comments. For a guy who really takes that to heart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the platform. You might, <laughs> might as well put on the no. O and A Reddit. I mean, I'm sure it's made it there. Oh, I know. But, I'm you know. sure. 
No, the uh, comment, because Stephen Joe wrote, he goes, just look at the comments, dude, they're brutal. <laughs> like, yeah, it's I saw that, bad. I'm like, I can't. It's bad. So uh, here, here it is. Oh, my God. Also said, congrats on the Netflix special, which was awesome. Also said, congrats on all the continued success. The new boyfriend, no pressure, I'm but so glad to have you're you on happy. my podcast. <laughs> and uh, all I want is you to be happy. Never will be back. Oh, look. Huh? What's that about? I know damn well there was nothing I've uh, I've done to you. That's that make the you part. Can even, you, can uh, you pause for another moment? It's like, it's like I wrote, you know, I texted, I did that. And then he compliments him and he goes, and, you know, you remind me back. Like, how could that be? How could that be? And then it's like, I didn't do anything to you. It, why does it have to immediately get to you did something to me or you didn't do something? Maybe Joe's busy. Maybe yeah. fucking, maybe Joe, uh, it, it makes no sense. And call me crazy, oh, but I think if you're going to get aggressive, uh, Joe Rogan shouldn't be at the top of that list. No, no, but that's passive aggressive. That that's is insanely OP passive aggressive. It's almost bordering aggressive. It's so passive Almost. It's so you know I mean? passive aggressive. It really is that line where I, that's when I saw that and I was like, oh, no, dude, like, because oh. I don't, it's on, that's why I just wrote like a nice tweet of like, I, uh, oh, there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. It, it, yeah, it's it's sad. It's sad. Uh, let's watch the rest here. Right. Damn well, there was oh, nothing I've right. uh, <laughs> I've done to you that would make you not even uh, respond. So maybe you could explain why you didn't DM me back or text me back Explo when I asked you to do the Open Radio podcast. All right, all right. I do love you and I do miss you. Just want an explanation. Peace. Bit aggressive. An explanation. Who, who are you to think anyone owes you an explanation for for not getting back to you so promptly? I'm so uncomfortable. Because now it isn't even like he's saying, "Hey, get back to me about doing the show." Now it's get back to me and explain to me why you didn't get back to me. That's psychotic, dude. Holy fuck! I would rather watch the scene in Red Dragon where <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman is glued to a chair. <laughs> it is so uncomfortable. What would you rather watch than what we just watched? I, oh my god. The Arbud Dwyer. Arbud Dwyer. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. Oh. And I, I don't... That oh is ISIS. God. Remember when ISIS put those guys in cages and lit them on fire? <laughs> I would rather watch that. Oh my God. It's less painful watching that. There's no, so it turned into like, hey, Joe. Like, I might even understand, hey, Joe, Opie, uh, why don't you come on the show? Watching my own mother get put into a vault <laughs> was more comfortable. Slid into the cold <laughs> granite vault <laughs> was more comfortable. I'm not even kidding. Oh my god. I guess I at least knew she was at peace. <laughs> While you're watching someone suffering. <laughs> just suffering. I, I don't mean to. It's so. Oh. When I saw it today, because it was so much shit people were saying and yes. saying it to me. Yes. I, I couldn't take any other stance other than, like, well, we have a very organized show. I didn't uh. want to, like, just. No, and it's not a pitting anyone against anyone thing. I do happen to know, look, uh, Joe and Jimmy are very good friends. Joe and Jimmy are very good friends. And I know Jimmy does not like Opie. Uh, I know uh, there wouldn't be any deals made like, hey, don't ever do that show. Or no. But I know that people, especially comics and entertainers and stuff like that, especially in those circles that we know, are very loyal when it comes to their friendships and business uh, partnerships and whatnot. So, like, I could see maybe Joe not wanting to stir shit up with, with Norton or anything. I don't know. I, I'm, again, I'm speculating. But it's one of those things. It's like, you don't, you don't get online and say no pressure. And then you, you start off saying, you know, do the show. You talk about your, your messages. And then you say, 
get back to me with an explanation as to why you didn't get back to me. Fair that is insanity. I'm sorry. It's insane. And, and I feel bad uh, watching that. That's why, like I had said before, that there's an obvious depression. Yeah, the depression beard is another thing. Yes. The beard is it. Look, look, I am the last person on the face of the earth that should be talking about any type of fashion statement or how anyone should leave their house. Yeah. I, I dress in this every day. I have T-shirts that people give me. My hair is a disaster. My yeah. face is a mess. I understand. Yes, I have a dyke haircut, and I'm a 35-year-old <laughs> man. I understand. We all have our problems. Uh, once uh, every couple of months, I dip my head in soy sauce. <laughs> So I, I don't look like Doc Brown from yeah. Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying we're right. perfect. So uh, don't get confused with that. <laughs> but you can't go around with a homeless guy beard. It's very you look homeless. <laughs> you, you know, there are plan. I understand the beard thing. You know, it was more a big thing a couple of years ago with the hipsters than it is now. But if yeah. you want to do the beard thing, do like there's nice groomers out there and whatnot. Uh, you don't have to go out. Just in this thing, that and the and the hat. I don't know what you're going for there, but if it's depression, <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> well, and it, it also it also doesn't help when your hat is just fish bones on it that you would find in garbage. <laughs> it's like when a, a cartoon cat gets he's got the garbage pail lid in his hand. He's like, ooh, he pulls out like like fish bones right. and a half eaten an apple core. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Like what you heard? Get more of the Anthony Cumia Show on Compound Media. Watch or listen live on demand. And most importantly, uncensored. Go to compoundmedia.com to subscribe and use the code PODCAST20 to save 20% off a new subscription. Download the Compound Media app on iTunes and Google Play and start enjoying the fine quality program.